My name is Liam. I'm 45 years old. I work from home and live together with my son in our small home. My son's name is Asher and he's a sophomore in high school. My wife Melanie is on a work assignment abroad. We haven't been able to meet for the last two years. She always says she will return home when she can take time off, but she only actually came back home to visit during her first year away. Recently she's been saying she's really busy and so she never comes back. My son always keeps me company, so I can't say I'm lonely or anything. Asher and I divide chores around the house and work hard every day. One day I was messing around on my laptop, thinking about how winter was coming soon. My wife's assignment abroad will probably finish soon, right? I mumbled to myself. In general, I'm not the winter type. I looked out the window and watched autumn leaves float to the ground in the sunset. Is my wife somewhere warm right now? Thinking about my wife, I picked up my phone. It's Sunday, so she should be off work. She picked up quickly. Oh, did something happen? Hearing her voice, I felt more relaxed. She seemed to be outside. There was noise in the background. It's already fall. I wanted to see how you're doing. I'm doing good. Will you be home soon? Well, I have a feeling the project will be extended. Her post abroad was going to be stretched even longer. I thought about how long it's been since I last met her. Not that I was crazy in love, but I did want to see her every once in a while. Honestly speaking, I'm not young anymore. I guess there's nothing we can do about it. Good luck out there. Talk to you soon. I hung up the phone and let out a sigh. Considering she didn't bring it up, it seemed like she's forgotten about our son's birthday. The next day I began working on a job that I had been putting off. Unfortunately, even if I don't feel like working, my deadlines won't wait for me. I was typing away on my computer and focusing on my project when my phone rang. The call was from a number I didn't recognize. I ignored my phone, but then the same number called again. I picked up this time. Oh, you finally picked up. This is Liam, right? Yes, who am I speaking to? The voice on the other side of the call belonged to a young man. I wondered how he would know my number. I work with Melanie. By the way, I'm 30 years old. I'm way younger than Melanie. My name is Miles. My wife was having an affair. My heart was beating with loud thuds and my chest began to hurt. It's true that Melanie is my wife's name, but why are you suddenly calling me to tell me this? I can't believe she'd ever have an affair. Do you have proof? I was confused. Oh, not wanting to accept the truth? You're really stubborn. I will send you photos after this call then. If he says he has photos, it must really be true. My final hopes were shredded. My shoulders drooped, dejected. How did you find out my phone number? I checked Melanie's phone when she was sleeping. Ah, I took a photo of her sleeping. I'll send you that too. Miles didn't hesitate to answer my questions. He said they were in love. They met at work when he was transferred abroad into the same department as Melanie about a year ago. That's around the time my wife stopped calling and coming home as often. How they both thought it was fate. How much Melanie loved him. Miles kept telling me more and more without realizing my jaw had dropped. I felt sick. My wife was younger than me, but she was still in her 40s. Being a guy with 10 years younger than her, I was appalled. I couldn't bring myself to say anything, so I just listened to Miles in silence. He began to talk about what Melanie has said about me. Melanie always says the same thing, that everything in her home feels so old that she doesn't want to go back. That even though she makes a lot of money, a pig is lazing around in her home all day. And that when you call her, it's annoying. Miles kept saying things I didn't want to hear. I clenched my eyes shut. Even if I cry, all my wife will do is laugh at me. What do you want from me? He stopped speaking. He suddenly seemed to be in a bad mood because I interrupted him. He began talking to me in a low voice. Hey, old man, do you understand what kind of position you're in? Melanie loves me more than you. I'm above you. You have no right to interrupt me, do you? The way he suddenly changed how he spoke, Miles seemed like a cartoon character. I let out a chuckle, which he didn't seem to like. He began to yell. I will grace you with $25,000 in alimony, so divorce her. I won't lose to an old man like you. Melanie showed me photos. Thanks to her, you live in a real nice house, right? You even drive a luxury car. Once you divorce her, I'll move into that house. He's talking about alimony, but he says he will grace me with it. I held myself back from making a joke. I asked him, do you have $25,000 to pay me? I'm also an elite, so it's no problem. I will give you money, so break up with her. I was silent for a while. Then I double checked. You've been having an affair with my wife for a year now, right? And she really said those things you mentioned? Just accept the truth already. He laughed. Well, there's my son to consider, and the divorce process overall, so please wait a month. So long, but as long as you break up with her, it's fine. You better break up with her within a month. He ended the call. I switched off the voice recorder I had been using. I always have a voice recorder on me, since I occasionally need it for work. Less than five minutes later, Miles texted me photos of him with my wife. My breath stopped. I didn't want to look. But all the photos were real proof. The pent-up emotions in my chest overflowed, and I began to cry bitter tears. Around dinner time, Asher came back from school. After washing his hands, he entered our living room and looked at me curiously. Dad, is something wrong? Hmm, no, it's nothing. His sharp gaze made my heart tremble. 
My face was red from crying, and I knew it would be useless to try to smile. Here you go. Asher pulled out a small gift bag from his backpack. I looked at it confused, and my son got a bit embarrassed. It's a bit early, but here's your birthday present. It was my son's birthday soon, so I completely forgot about my own. It's getting colder, right? You're always cold, so I got you gloves. I peeked inside the bag and saw a pair of fingerless gloves, convenient for wearing while working. I would be nice and warm. They were perfect for me since I always work on my laptop, and the color was exactly my style. My son really understood me. Thank you so much, I love them. The married life I've been living the past 20 years, what's it all been for? It crushed me to think like this, but I guess it was all a big mistake. But Asher was next to me. This wasn't the time to think about Melanie's affair. I need to get myself together. My son began to laugh loudly. I'm on your side. At the time, I thought he meant that he's grateful for me. I understood the real meaning behind his words later. Two weeks passed since Miles called me. A full month hadn't passed yet, but he called me again. Speaking to him was annoying, so I ignored my phone, but he kept calling. I gave up and picked up the phone. Hey, what's this all about? His voice was so loud it surprised me. I asked him what he was talking about. Stop playing dumb, old man! He yelled at me angrily. It took me a minute to get over the shock of his yelling. Melanie had promised to meet up with him for the first time in a while. But when they met, Melanie slapped him across the face. She wanted to break up with him. I'm breaking up with you. I was just playing around with you. How dare you call my husband? My wife abandoned him and stopped picking up his calls. They weren't on the same page about their feelings for each other at all. Melanie was angry that Miles had called me. She must have known that Miles had revealed something he shouldn't have. Did you say something to her? How would she have found out if you didn't? He was speaking so loudly that holding the phone up to my ear made my head begin to hurt. I turned on my voice recorder and switched the call to speakerphone. Yeah, after our conversation, I called her. A few days after Miles called me, my parents called a lawyer. I discussed things with my in-laws and I called Melanie. At first, my wife pretended not to know what I was talking about. But I played her my recording of Miles and told her I wanted a divorce. She became incredibly flustered and quickly booked a plane ticket and returned home. Until now, she made up so many excuses not to come home. Afterwards, she returned to her work. She must have also went back because she planned to meet up with Miles to break up with him. I told him everything. It's your fault. You must have threatened her with divorce, right? Seeing you cling on to her is so pathetic. I just laughed back. Should I tell you who I really am? He went quiet. He must have gotten scared. I'm just a pig who lazes around all day at home? You said that we built our home because of my wife's money? That's completely wrong. I'm an author. Sure, I'm always at home, but I'm always busy. We built this house with my money, and it's under my name. Miles was so shocked I could hear him trembling on the other side of the phone. He didn't seem to have anything to say to me, so I continued. Of course, apart from the house, the land and our cars are also under my name. Melanie uses more than half of her salary to pay back her debts to me. In the past, my wife secretly got into gambling. She took out many loans to support her gambling addiction. I considered divorcing her when I found out, but my in-laws treated me as if I was their own son, so I didn't want to make them suffer. After a lot of consideration, I paid off my wife's loans and became her creditor. That's why each month she gives me a portion of her salary to pay off her debt to me. Even if we divorce, she will still have to pay me back. I explained everything to Miles. He replied in a shaky voice. But she paid for almost all of our dates and gave me expensive gifts. Maybe she just took out another loan. She's the type who really likes to show off, after all. After Miles remained silent for a while, he remembered something. Ah, oh, right. Since I broke up with Melanie, I have nothing to do with you anymore. So I don't have to pay you $25,000 or anything, right? He thought he found a way to escape. I shook my head. You really don't get it, do you? Even if you broke up with her, the truth is that your affair with her destroyed my precious family. With the recording I made of you and the photos you sent me, I have more than enough evidence. I'll make sure you get what you deserve. I got in touch with a lawyer and we contacted your parents as well. You can't get out of this. The reason I was able to contact his parents is because Melanie gave me their contact information, hoping that would help me forgive her. When I went with my lawyer to meet Miles' parents, they cried and apologized to me. They promised they would make sure their son takes responsibility for this. Miles was disappointed I had told his parents. I'm an adult, so my parents have nothing to do with this. Why would you tell them? Really, the person most disappointed in all of this was me. I really cared about my wife. She was the mother of my son, and the woman I loved and married. When she got into gambling, it caused me a lot of trouble, but it was okay. But this time, I wouldn't forgive her. This man who harassed me over the phone, he really wanted me to keep this between us. He was more of a child than my son was. You better take responsibility for what you've done. I'll make sure to claim the $25,000 from you in alimony. Wait, Melanie was supposed to be the one to pay the $25,000. I don't have the savings and I've reached the limit on all my cards. Surprised he came up with that out of nowhere, I laughed. He thought my wife was rich and would just give him $25,000. I don't care. Talk to my lawyer. Your parents said they would make sure you pay the alimony, so good luck from now on. 
I listened to his desperate voice one last time, then hung up the phone and blocked his number. My wife and I officialized our divorce. The day before was the last time Melanie, Asher, and I all sat to speak to each other. Melanie told Asher that even if her and I divorce, she will still be his mom. I knew you were having an affair for some time now. I don't want a gross person like you to be my mom. My son said that with a smile. What kind of nerve does she have to call herself a mother? I could never forgive her for hurting Asher with her selfish deeds. Hearing what Asher and I had to say, her shoulders hunched down sadly. She's getting what she deserves. According to my son, he happened to see his mom entering a hotel with a man while he was out on a school trip. This whole time he had been worrying whether or not he should tell me. I remembered how my son said he was on my side, finally understanding what he meant. I apologized to him and felt tears roll down my cheeks. My son apologized and began to cry. Two months after the divorce. My son and I are still living in the same home. I decided I would sell the house once my son moves out. When I sell the house, I'll probably just get a single bedroom apartment somewhere. My wife is still paying back her debts to me, as well as the alimony she owes. It seems she's also paying off the expensive date she took her lover on. Melanie's life will probably be miserable from now on. Miles is also paying me alimony. He must be in credit card payment hell. The reason I'm not too upset about my wife's affair is because I have my son by my side. Anytime I look at the gloves my son gave me, my heart feels warm. From now on, I will make sure my son is always happy.